bit more progress. I've got lights and things fitted and I can control it done for it and new bed clamps and I've printed my first part and everything. So let's get into it. And so here are some pictures uh, of the new um, glass build plate clamps that I've made. So they mostly clamp the glass that way, but there's a little overlap at the top to hold it down. Um, but being six mil thick and 400 square, it's quite heavy. It doesn't tend to lift. So there's only like a, a one mil overlap at the top, just to maximize the print area that I've got. So they worked out okay. So I take the build plate off, I just um, slacken the screw that holds the, the clamp in and kind of lift it up a bit and then I can just slide the glass out uh, and then I made some lights um, I, I, there's so many different ways of doing the lights I wanted to use LEDs because here in the UK energy costs are so expensive that anything you can do to reduce um, energy um, helps financially so I like LEDs I could have gone for um, addressable ones I've got various ones of those scattered around the house but yeah they're okay at Christmas time and holidays but I just wanted um, white light to see how the print is progressing. Um, so I wanted a fairly diffused light and a close to daylight as I could get as well. So I could probably have bought something off the shelf, um, but then you're kind of constrained with uh, whatever size is available. And I wanted these specifically to fit the printer. So um, effectively I, I bought a lump of extrusion three metre length of extrusion and cut it to the lengths that I wanted. Here's some pictures. And then did the same uh, with the diffuser. So diffuser, I had a choice. I could have had um, uh, a clear diffuser which basically doesn't diffuse anything. I could have had um, an opal one which diffuses it quite a bit but you lose about 30% light. Could have had a black one which would have looked quite sexy um, when the lights are off but you lose about 50% of light there. So in the end I went for what's called semi-clear so it diffuses it a bit but you only lose about 10% of the available luminance shall we say. So the extrusion I chose was black. I could, I could get black or silver um, but black goes with the frame. And then the uh, LEDs, I just bought a five metre reel of tape. Um, and then so you just stick the tape. I'm not gonna go into how I made the thing. There's loads of YouTube videos about LED strips, but just stick the tape in there, solder on a couple of wires, put some end caps on, and Bob's your uncle got a light. Though I made some similar for our kitchen cabinets we've got downstairs. Um, but then I wanted a, uh, then I wanted a controller, so I've, I've got, three lights around the top. I've got two at the side and one at the front behind the face here, pointing forward. So you don't actually see the light, you just see the effect of the light. Um, I've got another one at the front behind the sort of lower bar, about the same height as the nozzle, shining kind of back. And then I've got two at the side from the very bottom up to the top. So my plan is I would probably only use those when I've printed something more than say 200 mil tall and I want to see what's going on. Um, so there's quite a lot of lights and I wanted to be able to dim them as well because like in daylight when your iris is closed down you need a lot of light um, compared to in the evening or at night time when your iris is quite open it would probably be too bright so just on the basis of I'm sat here working on my computer or something, if that thing's um, lit up like <laughs> some sort of Christmas illuminations, it's going to be a bit distracting. So I wanted them to, to be able to dim them. I wanted to use an ESP32 in any case for various other bits and bobs, 
So I made a little controller up which uses an ESP32 module and then I got three um, logic level MOSFETs. So they will drive the, so although the module runs on three and a half volts internally but it's supplied by five volts, I can switch these 12 volt um, LEDs using the MOSFETs and, and dim them. So here's a picture of the module I made. Because I, I had them kicking around, I had some DHC22 temperature and humidity sensors, so I thought, well, why not add one of them? Um, could be when I get the sides and panel and everything on here. I'm not particularly planning on heating the chamber uh, too much. Uh, enough to be able to do ABS, but maybe I'll just use ASO, I don't know. Uh, I need to get the draft out mainly. Um, but in the summer, with the bed heated it could get over sort of 55 degrees in there perhaps um, I, don't, I don't want it to get any hotter than 55 because I'm using a tool board so I, I want to keep it you know not too bad um, so it's possible that I might need to stick a fan or something in there to cool it in the summer um, so anyway being able to measure the temperature um, because I had a DHT22 kicking around anyway, seemed like a good idea. And then I made provision for a second one because I'm more interested in humidity. So I've got a second DHT22. Um, you'll see later I've made a, I've got a box for the filament, but we'll come to that in a bit. And then um, the other thing is, again, coming back to the energy saving kind of thing. Basically, I, I, I want them to go off if there's been no motion, if there's nobody in front of the machine, then just turn the lights off um, and turn them back on if there is motion. So I put a little PIR motion sensor, it's a little small one, very discreet, that I'll put in the front panel. So um, at the moment I'm like controlling this uh, with Home Assistant. So someone's done an integration for the Duet board using Home Assistant. I use Home Assistant a lot in my house anyway. So the way it's set up at the moment, I just um, I can just access the ESP32 using my phone or a computer or whatever and turn the lights on that way. I might put some sort of manual override on, I'm not sure. Um, so anyway, here's the dashboard I just quickly cobbled together uh, for Home Assistant. So as you can see at the top, I've got the, the three lights, top lights, front light and lower lights. So I can set the brightness level on there and turn them on and off by clicking on each one effectively. The various entities on the left hand side I've got the chamber temperature, chamber humidity, the filament enclosure temperature, the filament enclosure humidity and then printer motion as well uh, just for indication. And then next to that I've got um, three binary like toggles that I've set up which basically enable um, automatic control. That is to say, any of those lights that are enabled for automatic control, when there's motion, they'll get turned on. When there isn't motion, they get turned off. Uh, when there isn't motion for three minutes, I should say, is how I've said it at the moment. So no motion, three minutes. Any of the lights that are set to be um, enabled or for, for automatic control will turn off as soon as there's motion any of those lights that are enabled will turn on so that's basically to get around you know if I just had a motion sensor that turned them all off when there's no motion which ones does it need to turn on when there's motion again so I needed some way of it remembering that and then the other entities I've got there are the, the status of the node and its Wi-Fi signal. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen when I get sides and everything bolted on it, but anyway. Uh, so the, the lights are um, just held on to the frame with these little clips. And then here are some pictures. Um, in the evening with the lights turned on. 
Um, as I say, once I get the um, sides and the back and things on the printer, they'll be, they'll be a bit more obvious as to what they're actually doing. Uh, currently, they're, heating, they're lighting up the printer and making me study as well. So then finally, uh, an enclosure for the, um, the actual filament. So all I, all I did, I bought a, an acrylic box. A uh, 300mm cube, effectively. Um, it's a little bit wider than, I, than it needs to be, but that will give me room to put some um, desiccant in there or something to control the humidity, probably just pots of desiccant. It was just cheaper to buy something um, a bit bigger than I needed than that's available off the shelf than it was to have one made to fit and made to measure. Or I could have bought some acrylic and chopped it up and, and made it, but this was uh, this was on eBay, it was about the right, oh sorry, on Amazon, about the right sort of price and, and the right sort of size, so that's what I've done. So yeah, so I've got the first print done. Um, that was the base for the controller that you saw. I forgot to take a picture of it. Um, turned out pretty good. Um, I just, I didn't, I haven't tuned anything. Um, I haven't done any temperature towers, calibrated the extruder, nothing. I just used kind of out of the box settings recommended by Bontec um, and so forth and, and default temperature for PETG about 230 degrees and just uh, yeah just sliced it and printed it and came out pretty good the only thing is it um, there's a few little bobs on layer change and a bit of stringing um, so it needs a bit more retraction in fairness I used what Bontec recommend for the um, LGX Ace which is 0.4 mil 0.4 mil I'm used to 5 or 6 mil but anyway um, this being direct drive and with a very short filament path. Uh, but thinking about it, 0.4mm is probably for a, their default nozzle, which is also 0.4mm diameter. Um, I'm using a 0.5mm diameter, but also CHT, um, so which holds quite a bit more filament than a standard nozzle, so it's going to need a bit more attraction. So, um, so I've kind of upped that, but I'll do some um, proper... Um, retraction prints and temperature towers and all the other stuff but yeah pretty good came out okay so that's about it for now um, I'm working on a, a strip for wiping the nozzle because when I home the z-axis um, I use the nozzle as you know um, and I heat it to soften any plastic but I need to wipe it as well in case there's any blobs or anything who's out so I'm working on that at the moment and then it's going to be um, sorting out some panels and a draw front and bits and bobs like that but I'll need to save up for them I guess so anyway thanks for watching and um, that's it for now